Committee on Parole is called back to order. Today is the October the 27th, uh, 2022. Our panel members today are Ms. Uh, Cheryl Renatza, Mr. Pete Freeman. My name is Tony Maribel. I'll be acting as chair. Our remote facility is uh, Concordia Correctional. With the staff at Concordia, please introduce themselves. Mr. Lloyd, is there anyone in there with you? You're on mute, okay. Yeah, yeah, somebody here with me. Okay, good morning. Could, uh, with the staff at Concordia, please introduce themselves. Yeah. Ebony McCray. Thank you, uh, Ms. McCray. Uh-huh. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Uh, Lloyd, would you please give us your full name and DOC number? My name, Darren Lloyd, my DOC number 532-564. Mr. Lloyd, uh, this is a revocation hearing. I'd like to explain our procedure to you. Uh, first, I'm gonna cover your parole revocation questionnaire. Do you happen to have that with you? Yes, sir. Okay, I'll cover that in just a moment. Then I'm gonna read the allegations against how you have violated your parole. Uh, and then you'll either plead guilty, not guilty, guilty with a statement, or not guilty with a statement. Uh, and then we'll have a full discussion of what uh, what happened. Okay, do you understand our procedure? Yes, sir. Would you please uh, take a look at your uh, questionnaire? Yes, sir. Is that your name at the bottom where you've signed it? Uh, you recognize your signature on April the 11th of 2022? Yes, sir. And are these answers all uh, correct? Yes, sir. Mr. Uh, Lloyd, you indicated in answer number one, have you been treated for mental illness in the past five years? Or are you currently taking medication for a mental disorder? And you answered yes. Uh, have you, uh, which is, is it, are you seeing a mental health counselor? Or are you taking medication or both? Both, I just seen one this morning again. Okay, how often do you see the mental health counselor? Be like every two months. Okay, and what medication are you taking? Um, medication for bipolar, no, schizophrenic and stuff, depression. How long have you been taking that medication? by six years so even when you were out you were taking the medication were you taking it regularly yes i was i was taking it regularly but my script on my prescription i had the on my prescription the last time i came to jail my prescription it was done so i had to see the psychiatrist all over again in the midst of that i ended up coming back to jail okay so i went out uh -huh that long probably like a month and a half mr lloyd uh, do you have a lawyer sir no sir uh do you want to proceed today are you prepared to proceed today without a lawyer do you understand what we're doing here today yes sir do you wish to uh proceed without a lawyer yes sir all right i'm going to read the allegations against you uh it's alleged that you violated rule two in that you failed to submit monthly reports to probation and parole. How do you plead to that? Uh, not guilty because I only was out one month. Okay, we're, we're gonna let you. We're gonna let you explain it if you'd like to. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, you failed to maintain a stable residence as approved by your sex offender residence plan. The office has made multiple attempts to locate you at your listed residence at 5181 LA 381 in Good Oak, Louisiana, but you never were found to be there. How do you plead to that? Were you not guilty? All right. On or about February the 14th of 2022, 
you were arrested by the Cottonport Police Department in the commission of the offenses of resisting an officer. You were allowed to make bond on those charges on February the 25th of 2022. Those charges remain pending. How do you plead to that allegation? I'm not guilty. On or about March 28th of 2022, you were arrested by the Evolves Parish Sheriff's Office for failure to register as a sex offender. You were detained at the Evolves Parish Jail on March the 29th of 2022. And on 8 23 of 2022, you pled guilty to criminal mischief reduced from sex offender registration violation. You were sentenced to serve 90 days in the parish prison on the above reduced charge. How do you plead to that? I, I, plead, the, um, I plead the guilty, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was true, but I turned my own self in. Like, I understand. I understand. But, but you were charged as a sex offender. They reduced it to criminal mischief, and you pled guilty to that charge. Is that right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We'll talk about that in just a few moments. The office has been unable to visit you at home or elsewhere as you failed to maintain a stable residence as reported and failed to maintain contact with probation and parole. How do you plead to that? Not good. You failed to make payments since being released on good time supervision and are currently in arrears in the amount of $83 or $63 to supervision fees and $65 for processing fees. How do you plead for that? Nine, nine kids. Mr. Lloyd, your case has been assigned to me, so I'm gonna start asking you a few questions, okay? Yes, uh, yeah. It appears to me, and you, have to, you tell me if, if this is correct, uh, you were paroled on February the 1st of 2022. Is that right? Yes, sir. You reported to the Marksville office at that time. Yes, sir. You remember that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, the sheriff was in the middle of doing something else, and uh, uh, the probation officer was in the middle of doing something else. They told you to go to the sheriff's office to register and to uh, sign up for your notifications and to come back to the office to finish filling out your paperwork. You remember that? Yes, sir. And you never came back. Why? Because this, because when like when you first got out of jail, they give you 72 hours to go to the SSI place. And I've been getting SSI and disability like for some years now. And last time I went to jail, my grandmother cut it off because she didn't want me to pay no back time. So when I got a jail, I had to see probation and parole and try to make it to the SSI place at the same time. I had 72 hours to make it to both places. So when he gave me a break, I, I did go register, but I just ain't pay my fees in time. Like, like it took me, like it took me like three weeks to find a job. Then I had to put a week in. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me slow you down. You were in the office of probation and parole. Yes, sir. You were allowed to go make your registration and yes. come back with your paperwork. Yes, sir. yes, sir. But you never came back. Yes, sir. But I, I did. I did register. I didn't come back that day. I, I understand came. you registered, but you didn't come back to probation and parole. Did you ever come back and sign up? Yes, sir. When? When he, he got back in contact with me, he made me meet him at the sheriff's office and fingerprint me and do it, do it over. But it wasn't that same day. Okay. All right. And then from February the 2nd to February. Having a connection problem. Just hang in there and it'll come back in like a minute. What do you guys think so far? It'd be like it freezed up or something. Thank <laughs> you. 
I think he is saying the truth. He, he was out. He's only out for a month. <laughs> I mean, he has the answers that he's giving are like the right answers. They're not like uh, excuses to me. It's a shame that if he has schizophrenia, that's a tough one to handle. And uh, I don't know what he's in for either. Couldn't find the record. When it, when it's a parole revocation hearing, they don't go through the details of the crime. They just go through what he did to abscond from his parole, which in this case, it would be not registering, paying the fees, and then getting the arrest. <laughs> which wasn't resisting arrest. It was, uh, what was it, running from a police officer? And his excuse or his reason makes a lot of sense to me. As you're being stuck in a cell. Just your thoughts. No phone, <laughs> no pen and paper, no book. <clears throat> it's just you and your thoughts for hours and hours and days and weeks and months. And years. It's been a while since I wore a mask. When was the last time any of you wore a mask? It's interesting that this this was reported originally on October 27th. So it's interesting that this facility is still requiring masks. Just me and you, Darren. Yeah, imagine waiting. I don't know what his full sentence is, but just having that pressure of waiting on this board to make a decision whether you're going to get to be free or you're going to get locked up and have to serve out the remainder of your term. I don't know. I'd be freaking out. So many of these inmates seem to handle it quite gracefully, actually. Maybe it's, uh, I don't know what it is, but I would, I would be freaking out. <laughs> Probably would be pacing back and forth, It'd be like holding my head. There we go. Mr. Lloyd, can you hear me? Yes, sir. I don't know what happened. We had some computer issues on this end. We're back, we're back live again, okay? Yes, yes, sir. Mr. Lloyd, uh, where were you living when you when you got out of jail in February and you went and registered and you finally uh met with your probation officer? Where were you supposed to be living? 
I was supposed to be living at, at my house with my dad at 51, 51 Highway 361. And I was, but after it was taking so long for me, for my chick to get back on track, I had found a little job working construction with, 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 my, with somebody I knew, my kids, um, grandpa or something, and I was doing construction work. And early in the morning, I'd just be gone. So I'd be at my mom's house just to kiss the man to pick me up, just to, you know, start working. And I ain't find a job till three and a half weeks later. And I really ain't depend on nobody when I was in that world. I always, you know, did have stuff on my own. And I ain't asked nobody for nothing. Like, like, and, and, I, and I had made a mistake, and that was, that was my fault. How many kids do you have? Seven. Seven children? Yes. Where did they live? They live with their um, they mothers. I got four different baby mothers. Now, when you got out of jail in February 1st, were you still on your medication? Yeah, but then my medication had stopped and my script was filled. Then I had a chance to go meet with the psychiatrist and my day was coming up, but I ended up coming back to jail for a flight from my officer. Um, I seen a, a car, I never knew it was a police car. Right. A car. Let, let's slow down. Let me ask you one question at a time. Okay. Yes, sir. At some point, your prescription for your medication ran out and you weren't taking it anymore? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, where were you working? You said you you weren't at the house of your dad when the officers would come by because you were leave early in the morning to go work. Where were you working? We was doing some construction, some construction work like land, like concrete, with some the people called the Paris. They out of on um, Moenville, Herman Perinum. I was doing work with them, and we'll leave early in the morning. By the time we come back, and my PO like he missed me a few times, but you know I wanted to stay at home, but at the same time I had to get the money to from his rebellion. I understand. I, I, I understand. You, you've explained yourself well. All right, now let's go back to flight from the officer. Yes, what sir. happened? You got stopped by, uh, was it uh, uh, Cottonport Police Department? No, I never got stopped at all. I was walking one day to catch my ride to Mr. Herman Perry, and I seen a car. I never knew it was a police car or on um, my car, and I just ran. So later on down the line, when I started running, I seen some lights and I came back out and gave myself up when I see no, there was a police car at first. I didn't know what it was. I just broke out how they pulled up and stopped. So fast. Okay. Now they arrested you? No, they took me in for court sitting. Then a the woman said that she was looking for somebody else. I wasn't the person she was looking for, but she said since I made her sweat and she had to call extra units at the time, she arrested me. I hear you. So you, they charged you with resisting an officer. Yes, sir. Why? You're running away from the police. Yes, sir. But I did get myself back up. I didn't run for. I didn't run for long. I didn't run until I see lights. I, I hear you. I hear you. And then you bonded yourself out. How much was your bond? How did you get out of jail? Um, my mama bonded me out. My but my bond was number like a hundred twenty dollars, something like that. All right. And so let's talk about the sex offender registration. When did you get arrested for that? I never got arrested for it. My date was coming up. Like when you got a judge, Mr. Becker give you 30 days to pay him. And my 30 days was almost up. So when my, on my 30 day, I turned my own self in because I didn't have all the money. And you turned yourself in to I turned my own self in, Sheriff, in Marsville Sheriff Department. I, yeah, my mom yep. probably turned me in. That was on March 29th? Yes, sir. And uh, yeah, I never you ran the supervision fees. You haven't paid your fees, right? Like, like they give you a month. I wasn't even out about a month. Like, so I never had time to even pay a fee. Mr. Lloyd, let me ask you something. Where will you live? How long you've been detained now? Uh, since uh when is it uh march that you've been in jail for what seven months now yes sir. sir where will you live if you're able to get out um i want to go back to my dad because now he got some work for me and the job lined up and my grandmother being talking to 
my counselors and stuff and got everything back. Let's slow you down a second, okay? You're going to live with your dad. Yes, sir. And your dad has some jobs lined up for you. What kind of jobs? He worked at Exxon. And he's he can help you get on at Exxon or what? Yes, sir. That's what, what he kind told of work me. you be doing there. What can you do at Exxon? Uh, I don't know, but growing up, you know, I laid water lines and pipelines and sewers lines for like over like seven years. Like 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 I know how to work. I potato fields like like I'm not a lazy person. It just like seeing a couple of deaths and seeing people die it messed up me a little mentally, and I had to get on a little medicine. And okay. those so bit, but let's go to a different subject. You also mentioned you were going to follow up with your mental health and take your prescriptions. Your dad's going to help you with that. Tell no, me sir. what you got lined no. up for that. No, my grand, no, my grandmother going to help me with that because she been talking to my counselor and the SSI people and put me back so I can get back on my check and disability, you know, okay. faster. When you say she's been talking to your counselor, are you yes. talking about your mental health counselor, or yes. you talk who are you talking about? She's talking about the mental health counselor, and and they contact SSI and stuff through through them. Yes, sir. Okay. And so somebody's going to help you with that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But I do, I do admit I messed up, and and every day I I be sat in jail seven months. I thought about it. I even never got one write up since I've been in jail. I think I won right up. Mr. Lloyd, do you understand the significance of having to report to yes, your I parole do. officer when you're required to? Yes, now I, I know it's serious. It's not a no joke. You, you have to register and make notification as a sex offender. So yes. that means certain things that you have to do certain places that you can live that have to be approved by your parole supervisor. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And how long have you been in the facility you're in right now? I've been over here seven months, and I was in Marksville for like one month. Uh, have you had any problems? Uh, who is in there with you now? Uh, uh, the Sergeant Ebony, um, Ebony. Sergeant Ebony. Thank you. Uh, could you tell us how Mr. Lloyd's doing while he's been with you guys? Um, so far he's been doing great since I've been here. Thank you. Mr. Lloyd, you understand the significance of taking your medication? Oh, yes. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, any questions? Is there anything you'd like to say to us uh, before we vote? Y'all, please have me on my behalf. Please. I learned from my mistakes. Please. All right. All right. Mr. Lloyd, uh, I, I, I believe what you said about your resistant charge, it makes sense to me, and that's probably why you haven't heard it anymore, although it's still sitting there at some point, bonded out on it, so you need to make sure that you continue to check and find out so you don't miss a court date in cotton for it. Otherwise, you're going to find yourself right back in jail. Yes, sir. Well, you've been in jail for nine months. You understand how significant, how serious it is that you register as a sex offender. And it's very important that we at all times know where you're living. Yes, sir. If you move, you need to get permission from your parole supervisor because there are only certain places you can live as a sex offender. You understand that? Yes, sir. Taking your medication is, is critical. Yes, My vote today would be not to revoke, uh, to return you to supervision uh, and make sure with the following additional conditions, you probably already have conditions already, but the pro with the following mental conditions, the following conditions being you contact your mental health counselor as soon as you get out of prison and make sure that you take your medication 
according to the way you're supposed to do it. And of course, that you keep in touch with your parole supervisor and make sure you have an approved residence to live in. Yes, sir. I promise. I'm not going to get out until you have an approved residence. If your father says you can live with him and that's an approved place, you can get out and you have to do that. Do you understand that? Yes, I'm just one of three votes. That's my vote. Yes, sir. Um, Mr. Lloyd, I do agree. I think there's some circumstances uh, that you've explained for us. My vote today is do not revoke return to supervision with the added special condition that Mr. Uh, Miramella has, Mirabella has outlined. Good luck. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay, uh, Mr. Lloyd, um, I'm going to concur and uh, do not revoke, but I also want to add the conditions that they place you on electronic monitoring, um, and that will be at the cost of the state. So you'll have to report it off to get a precedent for it. Okay. Yes, sir. And Floyd, uh, uh, the decision of the board today is to do not revoke. Uh, you have certain conditions that you have to comply with. Uh, you need to make sure that you go to your mental health counselor, make sure you've got a proper residence approved by your supervisor, and also you're going to be required to do electronic monitoring. Okay? Yes, sir. All right. Good luck to you, sir. All right. Um, I think we Cordia Correctional, thank you very much for your help. Can I ask y'all one more question? Um, sure. How long would it take for me to get released? Shouldn't take long because your residence plan was approved before with your dad. So I'm sure it's going to be approved again. Yes. So, and I'll, I'll let the probation officer just needs to contact your dad and make sure that your dad's willing to accept you coming over back. Yes, sir. I thank y'all very much. Good luck to you, sir. You let me. <clears throat> okay, so how do you guys feel? It's interesting because he was out for basically a month. The day that he had to pay the fee and he didn't have the money, his mother said you're going to go in and you're going to report yourself and he got locked up again which is very rare that doesn't happen uh and i don't really blame it because who would want to go and get locked back up um but i mean it does show that he that he has you know the support from his parents and that he listens to them the, the situation where he ran away from the cops i believe him as well I don't believe he knew it was a cop. You have to be careful if an unmarked car pulls up on you. And when he saw the sirens, he turned himself in. It's unfortunate that he's suffering with schizophrenia. That's from what I've been told on this channel from people who have experienced it's It's a, an everlasting battle that really takes a lot of uh, attention, awareness, um, have to constantly change your doses. And, and so that's, that's, that's just unfortunate. Hopefully he can he can get a job and find a way to stay out. But I you know the parole board most often rejects these revocation hearings. But he he had the right answers. He wasn't just like you know he couldn't. Um, so I, I'm 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 okay with it. You can see he's trying. He doesn't have any like vile other not like he failed to test or he reoffended. But love to hear your thoughts. With that, I will let you go.